Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm your guest host, Rochelle Mansilungan. It's great to be, have me here again. Um, Dave and Andrew are not here today, so they asked me to guest host. And I have um, a great show for you today. So we have, um, I have um, Orlando Galindo. He's going to talk to us about um, pen testing. And I have, also have Joy and um, Leanne from uh, KCC. They're going to talk about the community tech fair that's coming up uh, next month. Did you, um, let's, let me just introduce, um, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, talk about yourself, um, Orlando. Yeah, sure. My name's Orlando Galindo. I currently am employed with KPMG, and I'm here today to talk about penetration testing. Okay, mm -hmm. and then um, Joy? Hey, I'm Joy Olas. I'm uh, from Kapilani Community College, and we are organizing a community uh, event. It's a free event, and We'll tell you a lot more about it later. Okay, great. Yeah. And hi, my name is uh, Leanne De La Vega. I'm the engineering coordinator at Kapiolani Community College, and I'm really excited to be awesome. here. Awesome. So I'm a graduate of Kapiolani Community College. Um, graduated in May 2017 with an IT degree, but I'm now at UH West Oahu. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud to um, help my um, <laughs> school. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm also helping Dave. I do this once a month, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Nobody else in my club wants to do this, so I always have to do it. <laughs> but okay, so let's start off with Orlando. Um, mm. I know that um, you're going to be teaching our um, the pen testing. Yes, correct. So maybe you should. Could you talk about like what pen testing is, penetration testing? Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, well, pen testing pretty much incorporates a lot of things, and what it essentially is is looking for any potential vulnerability and exploiting that. Okay. So that can range from anything from social engineering where in, individuals will go into an organization and they'll actually, um, through personal interaction, meet an individual and try to detect vulnerabilities within their process and procedures. How do they greet people? You know, trying to bypass certain things, even th things like locked doors, um, things like of that aspect. So there's physical penetration. Right. There's actual, like, through conversation. Mm -hmm getting as much information gathering as possible. And then it gets into the more renowned, what everybody thinks of penetration testing being is the ethical hacking aspect, where they actually involve technologies, like computers, coding, scripting, things right. like that. Right, so in my club, um, well, I still help at KCC, so we've been doing penetration testing. So when we first started out with Dave, um, we pretty much just did whatever we could. Like we didn't even have any like we took classes, but we don't really actually learn all of that. Mm -hmm. So we went. It was kind of like finding our own way to do things, like phishing emails. We made our own things. So <laughs> this is actually pretty good to have for students to just kind of learn. Because I know mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people that want to go into pen testing. But would you recommend someone to do that, like as, as a student, like to do that right away? Or right? I know that you don't get a job right away to be to be a pen tester, right? Mm -hmm. So do you recommend them being like more well-rounded? Because that's what I heard. Because when I um intern at the state. I mm -hmm. interned for this um, CISO, mm -hmm. so he would tell me that, you know, you got to look at the big picture. Right. Right. Not right. just, oh, I want to be a pen tester. Right. Which it, most pe people do, right? Work in most IT. So. Yeah, there, there's a lot of um, ideas and stereotypes and, like, pretty much everybody has a certain image, painted image or perspective, right. and that, that has to be quickly... Uh, it, you have to be able to change your perspectives right. instantly. Most people, will, for example, will think that penetration testing means that it'll, you'll be working alone, that you're isolated, you're just on a computer going at it, when in, in essence, it really does incorporate a lot of business philosophies, such as project management, planning things, being able to make a formal deliverable that is professional quality, so that way you can present that to the client, so that way you know they hired you to you know, find your exploits. And when you give it to them, it's in a nice formable, uh, formal deliverable. That way you have evidence, track records, histories, things for auditing purposes. Um, and there's a lot of group dynamics. So you have to work with groups. That, and penetration testing actually involves other individuals, a team, including client interactions. Right. So there's a lot of things that goes into it for sure besides just right. you know the, the tech that's behind it and knowledge. Could you kind of talk about like how you got into 
your position right now? Like, did you go to um, what schools you went to? Or absolutely. So I did start at KCC. <laughs> but um, I did uh, have to look at the whole picture of where I wanted my career to be. So I did start off with liberal arts, get a lay of the land, and after that, I essentially decided that IT was the field that I went into. Uh, it started off with video game design, graphics, CGI's, art, and then after I was fixing my computer for most of it, um, I decided, hey, a lot of people have this common denominator, they need computers fixed. So I got into IT. Then that led to networking and server administration. Right. Then, as the as you see, a lot more of these breaches occur to big companies. It started showing that the next niche, the next market, was the security aspect. Um, besides that, I also noticed that there's the business endeavor of it. So even though you could be very intelligent in the computer science aspect of it, there was really that liaison, that in-between between business and technology that I felt there was a high demand for. And that's why I started focusing on the business aspect of IT. So do you think you need more soft skills? Because I know there's a lot of, there's that stereotype that, you know, they're introverted, they don't want to talk, <laughs> which is majority, <laughs> but I'm the opposite. <laughs> and what would you think? What do you think? I definitely say that is the primary thing right. to, I highly encourage individuals to do that. The thing I liked about the colleges and the classes I took was the, speech classes, right. learning how to do presentations, as well as working in groups. That was uh, high dynamics that is really applicable to the real world scenarios, for sure. Right. And I, it was always explained to me from my mentors that, right. that you know, skills can be taught. You can either learn it from a, your colleague, other individuals in your practice, as well as self-taught, self-study. Right. But when it comes to that soft skills, you know, how do you engage with clients, the body language, active listening, how to present information, that is something I think is more uh, important to focus on as far as growth. Right. So did you, as after KCC, did you go to another college? And then, yes, okay. yeah. I went to Manoa, and oh, okay. that's where I went to the MIS, okay. um, Management Information oh, Systems. Awesome. Yeah. So I had to wear out where it was. Do I go into computer science? Yes. Then I become really focused in like computer programming, things of that nature. But like you said, you like the business aspect, right? I like the business okay. aspect because it, it was a high emphasis on that soft, personable skills. Mm -hmm. And you do have a lot of individuals who are really intelligent, but then when it comes to articulating or expressing that information or passing it, knowledge transfer, right. there's a lot of restrictions, usually self-inflicting, and that most of people don't know how to address. And with business, I felt it was a great avenue to, to kind of work on that, exercise okay, that. Correct, correct. And so I know that we, um, it's important to take certifications. So mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. kind of certifications do you have or would you recommend them taking? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> I have a lot of certifications. I yeah. have um, my MCSC. I have my uh, CISSP, my PMP. I also got my OSCP. And there's some other ones that was industry specific. Okay. Depending on whatever engagement my current employer had me on, I learned the technology. So, uh, in, for example, was ServiceNow, and that was a lot of database and JavaScript oh, right, right. things. So it really depended on scenarios. But so did your company pay for these, or did you pay it on your own? Majority of it, they did. They gave me great opportunities. Because I know a to couple so. of them cost like over six hundred or more, right? Six hundred plus, <laughs> in some cases a thousand. Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> My company has excellent benefits, and they really did provide. They, they have a high emphasis on training to continue yeah. in your knowledge, and they promoted it, and they allowed me to do that, and I'm entirely grateful for them for those opportunities. Awesome. So uh, what do you want to talk about a little bit more about the pen testing, like when it is, mm -hmm. and yeah, who is absolutely. it for? Right. So penetration testing, especially for the focus of what we're doing in class, mm -hmm. We're not emphasize, We're not really touching on the social engineering aspect of it, where we have inter human interaction. Right. 
We're primarily focused on the actual technical penetration testing, so using your computer. So they have to have VMware, correct? That is one of the requirements okay. for this course. They could have it directly installed on their computers, but most individuals like their operating system to right. be Windows and Mac. So in that case, to work around it, you have a virtual machine, okay. a VM, with the Kali Linux is what we're going to be using as our primary operating system, okay. a distribution version, distro version of Linux to be installed in that VM instance. There, from there, they'll use that tool to pretty much scan the network, okay. look for all the servers, and find exploit, uh, possible avenues of exploitation. So this is a three-day event, right? During spring break. Correct. So I already signed up. Mm -hmm. So as of last night, from our point, I don't know. I, only saw, I think I saw 25 students so 25 far. 25 students, yeah, correct. So, mm -hmm. so that's pretty good. Yeah. That's... So I keep trying to encourage my club members from KCC and UH West Oahu HCC to, to join. So I mm -hmm. think we have a mix. And uh, yeah. I believe there was also some UH, West, uh, UH Manoa students, right? From, exactly, from the uh, ITMA, yes. which was, I'm also an alumni for. Right, so. right. So we're both um, coordinating that, right, with you. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I can't wait for that. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then um, this event is actually at the ITM, no, the iLab. iLab. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. Innovation Lab. Innovation correct. Lab. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Have you guys ever been to that lab? Yeah. Oh my god. That's really cool. <laughs> they have like the three D pretty. Although yeah. they have that at KCC. Yeah. We I do. remember when I was in house class and we had a um, we had a field trip there mm -hmm. and we could make our own little thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I think I still kept that thing. That's <laughs> awesome. Like, awesome. Like a momento. But yeah, <laughs> because that's when they, I think that's when they first had it mm -hmm. and they they were just like showing it off to students for yeah. Uh, I don't know. I like that thing. I was like, oh my god. Yeah, we have a, we have a more developed 3D lab. Let's see. Okay, probably not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, they only have like you one. Can, you can come back anytime. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, I can't see. Did you want to add anything else, um, Orlando? Like, I'm um, like, what are some advice you want to give to like students, mm -hmm. like, like as like for myself? Mm -hmm. So, cause like, I know that we we all take like our have to take like those certifications and all mm -hmm. that, but a lot of us don't have money. Mm -hmm. So what would you recommend like us taking like? Definitely looking for right grants, away. any options there. Okay. Um, things like that to get additional funding. Okay. Companies that are willing to pay for training, that's a great option too. And it's a catch-22, because they're like, hey, you gotta have this experience, you gotta have these certs, well how do you right. get it, right? What I noticed too is, if you develop and cultivate that experience for yourself, you I mean, certifications are great. I mean, it looks great on paper, but if you're able to put that down in another like area on your resume, for example, and when it'll attract, those buzzwords will attract right. the employer, you'll land the interview, and once you are in that situation, that's where you're, is free reign for you to talk about your experience about it. Right. Ideally, it's great to have it in real world work situations and scenarios, but if you, for example, let's say you want to be a pen tester, set up a bunch of vulnerable labs, set up a bunch of VMs, virtual machines that are purposely exploitable, or in some cases build your own exploitable servers, and you'll start to learn through the action of doing. And then just continuously to hone in on the skills. Redundancy is mastery, so if you just continue to do that, it'll engrave the mind, and when it comes to that interview process, you, you have factual data, you'll be more comfortable to talk about it, and you'll be a knowledge matter, uh, subject matter expert. Because okay, you can actually say you kind of try to do it. Absolutely. Because right? I you know a lot of my friends say, like, well, it's just a piece of paper, like, you know, for their certification. Like, mm -hmm. why do you need that? <laughs> I mean, actually, that's a good point. Uh, <laughs> when I was studying for a lot of the certifications, sometimes you're not directly involved in the field yet. Right. But through studying through the certifications, you pick up on these buzzwords, these terminologies, and you'll start to educate yourself just, just by studying. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. So we're going to, um, so I know you're part of the I ISC squared, so we're mm -hmm. going to talk about the um, NCL, mm -hmm. the, the scholarship they have for high school yes. students. So, yeah. Yeah. So when we come back from break, we will do that. Um, Let's see what else. Um, and then we can talk about also the community tech fair, right, which is in April, April seventh, correct? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So you, you kind of know about that in, that NCL high school, yeah, yes. right? Okay. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Reynold Yoki wanted me to talk about this. He couldn't come on the show today, so mm -hmm. I don't want to butcher it. <laughs> I know he's watching, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but I try my best. But uh, okay. Is there any other takeaways that you want to? 
tripping up or anything? Absolutely. Or? Anybody who is interested in getting to the industry, especially right. dealing with big firms, just a word of advice is even though you have a specific goal set in mind, which is great, do do your due diligence of maybe expanding and going beyond that. Yes. Don't be afraid to, afraid to try new things. Correct. Because like food, you don't know what you like until you try it. Right. Because there may be other avenues and expertise and careers that is out there that you just didn't know about. And the big firms will give you that opportunity. Give it a try. If it works out, great. If not, you know why you don't like it anymore. Right. Another thing, too, is don't be afraid. Try it. Even though these tech terminologies can be overwhelming, there's mm -hmm. always new technology. Right. Just hang in there, study, learn about it if you don't know it, and always take notes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not just mental notes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tangible's better. So we're gonna be, we'll be right back. We've got to pay some bills, and we'll be right back in the Cyber Underground. <laughs> That's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. Hello, everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I have um, my guests here. Uh, we're all talk we, we were just talking about pen testing. So um, now we're gonna talk about like the National Cyber League. I know we, when I'm on the show, I always try and promote this because it's an ongoing registration right now. So Sunday is actually the last day to register to pay for 20, it's gonna only cost $25. I think after that, it might cost a little bit more. So, but the new thing that they added for the NCL is actually they included um, high school students now. So, for those of you that don't know, the NCL, the National Cyber League, is a defensive and an offensive puzzle based um, capture the flag type um, competition. So, it's a good um, learning ground for um, not just college students, but it's great that they also have included the high school students because I know there's a lot of um, high school students that are interested in um, cybersecurity. So, this is a good way for them to just practice in like real world kind of things that could actually happen in like a company, right? So. Um, I know that, um, so Orlando, is, he's actually part of the ISC squared, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I know they just recently revamped their whole um, organization, so mm -hmm. there's actually going to be, um, I think it was just announced on Wednesday, mm -hmm. that they have a scholarship ready mm -hmm. for high school students, but this, they need to act on this fast because registration ends on Sunday, mm -hmm. March 25th, and I believe the time is at 5.59 p.m., local time so, <laughs> HST. so we have to make sure I'm trying to promote this as much as possible and I know it's um, the first the program provides a hundred scars for each is it thirty five dollars mm -hmm. I think grand total for thirty five hundred correct and so I think they're gonna give so the last time I was here we talked about the goal girls go cyber star so they're gonna give um, those girls heads uh, I think uh, first, what do you call it? Uh, like transfer applications, like the the windows for and everything. No, no, no. So they're giving them chance first mm -hmm. to, to to apply. Right, exactly. Right. Appl application. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> so sorry. Lost my train of thought there. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> and so it's a limited basis kind of scholarship. Mm -hmm. So um, so we're trying to encourage it. Um, and do you want to talk about who else is part of this um, the scholarship? Well, actually, you pretty much surmised it really well. Uh, the target is essentially the ISC Square is doing a lot more. One of the pillars is giving back to the community and to right. also strengthen the practice. And what we're noticing, there's a high demand, but there's no supply. What we mean by that, there's a high demand cyber, but there's not a lot of individuals who can staff it. And a lot of organizations are actually hungry for that. Right. And what has been identified to address this issue is, of course, education. And education is to start young. So targeting individuals right. that are in a certain, you know, get them started early in the career. And that way they can build up interest in it. And then by the time they actually are of age for employment, they're already hitting the ground running. They already have a head start. There's a lot less learning curves for learning to 
try to get those skills and everything like that once they hit the workforce. Right. And I know for the girls' cyber side, that was pretty, um, I know that that, um, that event mm -hmm. was pretty successful from what I heard from Hiyoki, so that's actually good. Mm -hmm. And um, so for this event, um, so I, like I told you, it's March 25th. Mm -hmm. And then, um, oh, I know. So there's also going to be, I think they're going to, also going to provide training sessions for these students. So I know they were asking if we could be mentors for this event, because exactly. I'm actually registered for the NCA along with my other members. This is going to be like my third year doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not the best, but I mean, I think I've gotten better oh, throughout no. the years. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I love it. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, I go hard when I do it, and it, it, it takes a lot of your time. So mm -hmm. I'm interested to see how these high school, they're probably going to be better than me. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I mean, it's OK. <laughs> This but for me, it's a, right. right. When you teach. For me, it's a it's a learning process, mm -hmm. and it's just it's for experience, and it's fun. So that's the whole thing. It's fun, mm -hmm. and it's it, we do it as individually, and then as a group afterwards. Yeah. So I think that's great. Have you done the national cyber? Um, no, season? I haven't personally. So yet. I know that there's a <laughs> I believe you professionals or. Do we, there's yeah there, there's plans for that. Yeah. I well with me. Teaching, giving yeah, back to right. UH and everything like that, the whole UH system. Um, definitely, we'll we'll take up the next right. course of actions thereafter. Because I know that um, the Grey Hats Manoa, they're going to participate in this. And yeah, the Grey Hats so, yeah. as well, exactly. <laughs> Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so uh, and, and then so let me let me address you guys. <laughs> so, I know, so I know you guys have a big event. Um, I remember when I was at KCC, you were planning this for like. Oh, More we kept than putting yeah, it off. right. And then when you finally emailed me, like, oh yes. <laughs> and I know I'm not the president there anymore. I passed it on to James, but then I still kind of oversee them. So when I saw your email, I was like, oh my God, yes, we gotta, we gotta do this. So that's why I suggested that you know we all help out, mm. not just that club at KCC, mm. but everyone. At, the whole entire HATS organization. Mm. So we're very glad to help you. <laughs> and you guys are going to come and talk about yes. Yeah, so we're gonna um, we're gonna have our own table. Mm. We're gonna talk about. Um, Internet um, safety awareness and just some sort of cybersecurity tips when you're online. Mm. With this, and then I, I know we're going to do some kind of hands-on thing. We're going to have our computer and they're going to test like HTTPS, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so the, yeah, because the whole idea is this is going to be a community event, yes. and so it has to be. At, it's not a professional. So it's going to be kind of like basic but fun. So hands-on. That's what we're right. looking for. Yeah. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit more about this event. It's okay. going to be on April 7th, it's a Saturday, from 1 to 4 in the cafeteria. Okay. And uh, some of the fun things that we're going to do, uh, perhaps Leah will talk about, is our little animal stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was so wondering what this was. <laughs> Wait, my phone's not there. Oh, here. Yeah, one yeah, of <laughs> yeah. Here you go. Oh. Might not stay. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Yeah. <laughs> One of our um, engineering students actually uh, 3D printed some designs. Joy really wanted oh, awesome. something that anyone could use. And so since a lot of people have um, yes, you know, cell phones, we great. wanted to make something that they could use <laughs> on their desk. You know, very functional. <laughs> oh, so they could get this. Yeah. So, and this is free, right? It's free. Okay, they can awesome. choose um, between three, three colors mm -hmm. and maybe about four designs. Mm -hmm. And they can watch okay. it print and we'll have some pre-printed. But some kids just like to sit down and watch it print, but that's okay. But do you know how yeah. long it takes to print? I it's know. about 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and sometimes it can print a little faster, too. So. Well, you're going to have more than one? or Yeah, we'll have three oh, okay, uh, three great. printers in case anyone is interested. We have uh, two TASBOT 6s and yes. one TASBOT 5 printing at that day. And this is your first time to have this event, because yes. right? I don't remember this mm. from the other... Yeah, this is the first time we're organizing it. So we have a range of like school uh, our, our school clubs. Okay, yeah. So we've got... The STEM people, we've got, um, we're going to show some new media clips because mm -hmm. they do a lot of um, website and right. animated movies. Well, the creative shots. media. Yeah, the creative awesome. media. Yes. We have, uh, and you guys are coming. Oh, yes. The IT club's coming. Then, so we have a student club to promote what's happening at KCC. We also have a community club. So we have Hawaii Mac, uh, Mac. Mac and Apple User Club, we have Eyes oh. of Hawaii. So these are people from the community right. coming to share their skills and their passion. And they're going to come in at a level that, that can talk to our community. Right. Because we don't want, we don't scare people away. This is not a professional conference or anything right. like that. Yeah. <laughs> but we also have the big box vendors coming. So Microsoft's going to come with their VR and virtual reality oh, awesome. related uh, activity for people to try. Um, so. They're also going to bring 
like the Xbox, uh, okay. some laptop <laughs> coding, some <laughs> Surface Pro, so, but they're not selling anything. Okay. So there's yeah. no pressure. <laughs> it's just for our community to come together and to celebrate technology and have fun. And right. it's all free. Yeah. I know that you um, asked us if you could help with them. Um, Wiping clean the hard drives, right? So, yeah. that's, so that's actually something special. You're gonna give, um, donate. If you know, people bring in their devices, and we're gonna donate it to Hawaii Hope, Hawaii yeah. Hope, right? Hawaii, Hawaiian Hope, right? Yes. And Hawaiian Hope uh, is an organization that they reuse some of the parts as well as on the computers, or it can, it can be anything. He said to me, iPhone, laptops, anything. They can reuse. But it I know that. Um, I, I believe they also um, like that organization helps like. People in need, right? Yes. Yeah. So, like, they need a computer, mm -hmm, then they mm -hmm, would also mm -hmm. let them have yeah. a computer. So they uh, they have like reach out to um, schools that need awesome. or, or school clubs that need that. Yeah. Well, that's great. So <laughs> bring as many as you have to get rid of because I know I have a lot in my basement. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> some of it are not working. <laughs> you have some <laughs> in your basement? I just recycle them into. My in-home data center. <laughs> <laughs> well, are, you, are, are there any like? Is there like food or anything? Yeah, or? We have a couple of uh, vendors coming from the farmers market. Okay, great. So they're mainly oh, yeah, going because to the be farmers market is on that Saturday, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but they're in the morning. Okay. But a couple of them are oh, going yeah, to come in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be mainly snacks and okay. beverages. Yeah, not full meals. So it's strictly yeah. just in the cafeteria. Uh, the farmers market stores are going to be on the Great Lawn. Okay. But our event where all the big box uh, vendors and our school clubs and our user groups are going to be inside. So it's going to be upstairs as well as downstairs. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what else do we have? They, we have, of course, um, door prizes. So that's another freebie. Uh, lots of door prizes. Yes. And a lot of the vendors have giveaways. So if mm -hmm. you stop by their booth, ask a few questions. Yeah. And I think one of the most exciting things we're going to have, one, another user group that's coming, it's called Eyes of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And they're going to take people around for a photo walk around oh. campus, and they're going to have different themes so you can sign up. Right. Yeah. Great. So this event is actually on April uh, April seventh at from one to four. Um, so we have our. Um, so this is what I sent them. <laughs> There's no fly, but they have a website yeah. as well to look up if I'm. And then the contact at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So you can the contact me seven um, three four. Nine three five two. Do you are you still looking for volunteers or? Oh, we welcome volunteer. volunteers. <laughs> we um, people to participate. Right. Just come and enjoy. What is your expected like um like we're not, numbers of people? Because it's the first time we're doing. We don't really know, but we've reached out to a lot of schools, awesome. uh, all our community centers, and we are hoping. All right. Hoping for good turnout. Okay, great guys. So thank you so much for having uh, for coming on the show. You know, is <clears throat> um. So I do this like once a month, so <laughs> I have to always think of topics. So I mean, this is great that I always try to find something that's like um, it's gonna come up in the, in the coming months. So ours is next week. The, mm -hmm. um, would you want to talk about that again? Just the pen testing, just really quick. Yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> we're gonna be doing the pen minutes. testing. That's gonna be from the 28th to the 30th. That's the Wednesday through right. Friday next week. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing on my spring break. No break for me. <laughs> <laughs> actually, on that day before that, I actually have to present a pen testing project that I've been doing with my clubs. So. Oh, excellent. Uh, yeah. So. so you're all ready. Your mind's already oh. in the right state. All oh, right. You love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I do. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for joining us on the Cyber Underground. I'm your guest host, Rochelle Mansiloni. We'll see you again uh, next week. Um, Dave and Andrew should be back. Aloha.